All right, Mr. De Silva, what seems to be the problem? I came out the back of my shop and found this dosser trying to steal my car. Oh, he smashed the window in. All right, if you could release him, please, Mr. Uh, De Silva. Thank you. So we can ask him some questions. It's a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Don't let him run off. All right, all right. Now, when you called him, what exactly was he doing? He was inside the car. I couldn't believe it. Is that true? Had you broken into the vehicle? <laughs> I don't think so. You don't think so? He's messing you up, Bob. All right, all right, thank you. Polly. Polly, right, thank you, Mr. De Silva. Oh. If you could just come thank over you. here, sir, let the sergeant ask the questions. Right, I'm being destroyed. You've got to come down over here then, yeah? yeah we'll please. Just let the sergeant talk to him first. Find out good what's man. going on and then we'll come back and come over here. Just wait here by the car. Right, and what's your name? So you say you actually saw him in the car? My name? George. George O'Brien. Right, George, and what were you doing in Mr. De Silva's car? It was raining, you know, and, and, the, and the door was open, so I got in to get out of the rain. I must have fallen asleep. <laughs> so you just got in the car to get out of the rain? That's right. And you're saying you didn't break the window? All right. Polly! Right. Dear Oscar from 469, ambulance required at the back of Beechin Street shops. Gary, can you call an ambulance? Sarge. <coughs> oh, I don't believe it. Not again. Ambulance needed. Sierra 1 from Sierra Oscar. Ryaness Road Industrial Estate, Hallands Warehouse. Another alarm. Can you deal? I'm not there again. Oh, go on. Yeah, Oscar from Sierra 1. On the way. You're saying it's another false alarm. Yeah. What's the betting it's the same security guard? The ambulance should be here soon. How are you feeling now? Uh, the, the pain's not too bad. Oh, I, I've had it before. It's an act. He's trying it on. Leave me alone! Look, Mr. De Silva, why don't you go back with WPC Page to the shop and wait, eh? Thank you. And Polly, get all the details for the crime sheet, yeah? Sarge. I don't feel good. Is it getting worse? No, I, I've done nothing wrong. I, I swear. And don't worry about that now. Okay. Will you... Will you ring my niece? Her name's Mary. Well, what are these? Oh, her number's on all of them. As I say, her name's Mary. You can't remember where you live? I, I remember getting into this car because it was raining, and, and I was tired. Hey, you see? You see, I'd been walking to my brother's house. And where was that? Dublin. Oh, no. It is Jobsworth. Don't tell me another pigeon's got inside the alarm. Of... There's been a break-in around the back. You sure? Of course I'm sure. It's a pity you took so long to get here. I'd be miles away by now. It's down here. Why is the alarm still going? Well, I've only just got here. I was patrolling the Dunford Street side. How long does it take you to run over from Dunford Street? <laughs> I walked, not paid enough to run. This is where you must have got in. I'll go and switch the alarm off. Why is it security guards are always such prats? Because they're all ex-coppers. Did they take anything? They'll be able to tell in the morning. I'll get the key over. Steve, hold up. Right, mate, just stay there. Right, Steve, he's coming your way. Yeah, I've got him. Don't let him get out of the door. Who, me? Yes, you. What do you think you're talking about? What are you playing at? Why didn't he stop him? He's only a kid. Oh, my God. 
Easy, oh. easy. You're nicked. Come on, son. Well, I started to question him. His breathing became heavier. He became agitated, and then he collapsed. Well, it's probably enough. Okay, we'll have a look. Stop in I want to tell the sergeant yeah, something. Yeah, no, it's all right, Mr. O'Brien. Look, I'm not going to ask you any more questions. Right? You're just going to go off now with the doctor and get yourself sorted. You know, you shouldn't have treated me like that. Who? Not the black fella. Before you came, he knocked me about. <laughs> I didn't do any harm to anybody. No, 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 it's all right. Don't you worry about that. Sometimes Don't I worry didn't. about that. Now, go on. Off you go. Please, I didn't. Can you let me know when you're discharging him, please? Right. Thank you. Sarge, this is Mr. O'Brien's niece, Mrs. Travers. Mrs. Travers? My uncle's still here, is he? Yes, he's being examined. He seems okay. I don't understand. Well, what's this about him breaking into a car? Mr. O'Brien was found in a vandalised car by the owner. But that's ridiculous. There's got to be some mistake. Well, he wouldn't do anything like that. Well, you've arrested him, have you? No. We just started questioning him when he collapsed. And did he tell you he doesn't drive? Where is he? They've taken him through to the cubicle. It won't have helped, you know. You have a go at him. He's a sick man. What did O'Brien say, Sergeant? Apparently the silver's had a go at him. I think we should have a word with Mr. De Silva. So what were you doing in the warehouse, Keith? My mates, I dare ask him. You tell me his name and I will. What's your mate's name? No way. My son was put up to it. Mum. Look, you can see for yourself he's just a kid. He was bullied, his mate made him do it. Mum, shut up. Just tell us your mate's name, Keith. What, and get killed for grassing him up? I just thought he was going to nick a car, that's all. And did he? No. I tried this Mercedes behind Beeching Street, but he couldn't get it started. Come to take my statement. Mr. De Silva, we've been with the man you claimed was in your car. Thank you. I'm not claiming he was in my car. I found him. It's a fact. Mr. De Silva, you said when you first got to the vehicle, that the suspect was in the rear seat. So? Well, we believe that the suspect was now telling the truth. He said that the car door was already open and he just got into shelter from the rain. Shelter from the rain? Are you kidding? I told you I caught him red-handed. He was about to steal my car. <laughs> We've also been told that he doesn't drive. So it seems unlikely that he was trying to steal it. I'm sorry, Mr. De Silva, but what we found out about the suspect and his medical history means that we're unlikely to charge him. For a start, we'd need witnesses. Was there anyone else around at all? I'm a witness. What is it with you people? Why are you always doing this? I'm sorry? You know how many times my shop's been burgled? Five times. And you have never made one prosecution. The first time, a swastika was left there. An obscene message sprayed outside and your CID didn't do a thing. They even refused to treat it as a racial attack. What has that got to do with this case? Everything. Mr. De Silva. I expect my property to be protected. And I don't need a couple of coppers coming in here trying to brush it under the carpet. Now look. The bottom line is you don't give a toss what happens to my property because I'm black. Mr. De Silva. You're just trying to save yourself some paperwork. Now, Mr. De Silva, will you shut up and Hold stop? On. I haven't finished. Will you stop being so bloody paranoid and listen? Thank you. Now, first of all, no one is trying to brush anything underneath the carpet. Oh, no? No, I came here, if you'd let me finish, to tell you that the man that was in your car is being held at hospital because he has a suspected heart attack. Well, if he has, he brought it on himself. Really? Is that true? Only he says there was some physical contact between you before we arrived. He claimed that you grabbed it. Don't you dare accuse me. Get out. I want you to get out of my shop. Point. My fault. Sarge? Well, I knew how disillusioned De Silva is with the police. I'm trying to make an effort. Tell him exactly what we found out. Uh, 92 from Sierra Oscar receiving. That'll teach me to get the kid gloves out. Yeah, go ahead, Ray. Yeah, we just had a call from the hospital, Bob. 
Were you dealing with a Mr. George O'Brien admitted for a suspected heart attack? Yeah, we were with him about 30 minutes ago. Well, he's gone walkabout. They can't find him on the wards or anywhere. The consultants are very concerned. All right, Ray, we'll go straight over there. No sign of him then, Steve? No, Sarge. There's nowhere else to look, really, is there? He's probably sitting at home right now, having a nice warm cup of tea. I can't see him getting through this lot. We've looked everywhere, Sarge. Twice over. He'll be miles away. What's through here? Uh, don't know. It's not on the map. Well, he's not here. We'll have another look round the car parks. Don't want to fake one around, do we? Oh, yes, sir. How can I help you? I want to speak to whoever's in charge. What's it about? I was visited by your office at half an hour ago. And I was unfairly treated. I see. Tell your inspector. I want to make a complaint about Sergeant Cryer. Vincent De Silva. He's lodged a complaint against you. What for? He's claiming verbal abuse. You're kidding. I've got to take parade. Oh. Oh, thank you. I uh, presume De Silva's exaggerating things, isn't it? It depends on what he's claiming. And did you swear at him? I told him to stop being bloody paranoid if that's swearing. Right, so you admit it then. He blew his top. We couldn't get a word in edgeways. Even so, I'm surprised you lost your temper. I didn't. I just took control of the situation. Otherwise, he was going to walk all over us. OK, we'll talk later in my office. I'll see what I can sort out. Sir. Bob. I just had St. Hughes on the phone about the old boy you were searching for last night. George O'Brien? Yeah, they found him. Where? Somewhere in the hospital grounds. Dead. Quite Look, bloody is an abusive term, right? And Sergeant Cryer should have known better than to have used it. I can't believe he'd make a mistake like that. Mm. The only mistake Uncle Bob made was admitting to it. When was the last time he had a complaint against me? Eh? Queen Victoria was on the phone. <laughs> nice to get a bit of respect for once. All a bit scared you might swear at us, Sarge. Uh, if you'd just like to take a seat over there. What's the lightest? 7,000 quid's worth of car CD players are missing. Well, has Keith Bottrell told you the name of his mate yet? Yeah. Well, he's just about to, I hope. Oh, yeah, we had a call from your friend, uh, Ratcliffe, the security guard. What did that Burke have to say? He says he saw someone hanging around the warehouse long after you'd gone, about four this morning. <laughs> but he didn't think to call us till half an hour ago. Yeah, well, he wouldn't be bothered, Sarge. Like I told you, he's a Burke. Then how did he get through the hedge? Same as me. He'd have come round the side road. I'll show you if you want. It's a bit of a long way around, that's all. No, it's all right, thanks. Can I get back? Yeah, sure, thank you. Very much. We were here, Polly. Sarge? Steve and I, we were here last night. I don't see how he could have got through. It was pitch black, Sarge. You're not going to see everything. That's why we have torches. Come on, Keith. I think you should tell the truth, Keith. Why? It was your idea. Yeah, but I didn't know you nicked all that gear, though, did I? Never gone that far before. Well, you tell him then. Go on. Keith refers to his mother. She told me to say it. Shut up. Say what? That I went with a mate. Keith! When she came here last night, she said if I made out that I got bullied into doing the breaking, that I wouldn't get into so much trouble. So you weren't with anyone last night? I broke in by myself. The alarm didn't go off at first. So I put a few boxes outside, came back for some more. And what was in the boxes? Car CD players. I'll put them outside, they should still be there. Well, it could well have been a massive coronary, we don't know. But we'll find out tomorrow. But if we found him last night, he'd still be alive. Yeah, well that's difficult to say. Excuse me. Thank you. Hold on, Polly. It must have been ten yards from him. 
I caught a man trying to steal my car. And he tried to scare me off by saying I'd rough the man up. I'm sure that wasn't his intention. 99B. Mr. De Silva, there are two ways of dealing with Sergeant Cryer over this. We could take the formal discipline route, which is, in effect, a court-martial involving the time of two other officers. Sounds good to me. Or, taking into consideration Sergeant Cryer's exemplary record, and given that this is rather a minor offence... Minor offence? I propose we adopt an informal resolution. And what's that? Oh, rather than waste everyone's time with the formal hearing, the incident will be recorded by our complaints unit. And? You have the satisfaction of knowing you've been listened to. No, no, no. I tell you what I want, Inspector. I want an apology. I want Sergeant Cryer to apologize to me in person. If not, I want a full inquiry. What is it? Mr. Ratcliffe. Yeah. I'm DS Greg, Sun Hill. This is DC Croft. We're very keen to trace the man you saw hanging around the warehouse last night. <laughs> Look, can we talk about this later? I'm working nights and I'm trying to get some sleep. Yeah, we just wondered if you could add to the description you gave over the phone. Oh, like I told you. I saw him hanging around the car park, and like I said, he's wearing a coat and uh, had long black hair, that's all. He had long hair? Yes, no, no, I'm sorry, but I've got to get some kip, all right? Um, his hair seems to have grown. What? You told us earlier the man you saw had short hair. Oh, God. You should be pleased. It saves a lot of messing about. I've made a big effort on your behalf. Is this just to keep me off a of disciplinary? We need to show the likes of De Silva that we listen. All he really wants, Bob, is an apology. I don't have to apologise. You may be aware that a meeting is allowed to take place. Only if the officer agrees. Bob, if we clear this up quickly, we keep it within division. You avoid an inquiry and a possible mark on your record, and you don't risk losing two days' pay. I'm not going to give him the satisfaction. He's a professional police hater. With some justification. His shot was a target of a racial attack, and CID mishandled it. So what are you saying? We have to keep apologising for the way some old sweat DC treated him five years ago? Look, Bob, you've admitted swearing at him and something's got to be done about it. Now, the choice is yours. The whole matter can be dealt with in minutes. That way it saves us all a lot of time. All right, I'll meet him. Good. He's still in my office. I'll uh, see you there in about five minutes, all right? I took the CD players. And there was no man hanging around all night. I walked around the warehouse, checked it was secure after the police had took the boy away. And that's when I found him. Up by a wall. Two boxes? Yeah, the kid must have put them there. And where are they now? The thing is, you see, I didn't nick them. They'd already been taken out of the warehouse. I found them. They were outside. They'd been nicked already. So why didn't you take him back? Because I thought you'd blame the burglars, didn't I? Look, I won't go inside, will I? I've never broken the law before. What you've committed isn't exactly straightforward theft. Exactly, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's called theft employee. Which is worse. What? You've betrayed the trust of your employer. My employer? Do you know what they pay me? I'll be better off on the dole. The CD players, Mr. Ratcliffe. They're on there. I wasn't even sure what they were. Come in. Oh, there you are, Sergeant. Sit yourself down. You uh, know Mr. De Silva, Sergeant Cry. Sir. Well, hopefully this won't keep us long. As you know, we're here because Mr. De Silva feels he was unfairly dealt with last night. Mr. De Silva, if you'll go first, I'd like you to give us your version of what happened. Well, as I've told you before, 
Sergeant Cryer came into my shop and told me there wasn't enough evidence against the man that had damaged my car, even though I'd done his job and caught the man red-handed. Sergeant Cryer then went on to accuse me of putting the man in hospital. Untrue. Making out that I was the criminal and not the victim. It was when I objected to this that Sergeant Cryer swore at me. Saying? He told me not to be bloody paranoid. However, I'm prepared to let the matter drop if he apologizes. Sergeant? Well, I'm sorry if I swore at you, Mr. De Silva, and if it makes you any happier, I apologize. But the truth is that you were aggressive and insulting and you made what I consider to be racist remarks when all I was trying to do was explain to you how the condition of the suspect may affect the prosecution. Well, it's a pity you find that hard to believe because the suspect died earlier this afternoon. And apparently he was greatly concerned about what happened last night and with good reason. He'd undergone police questioning he was in your company for five or ten minutes before we arrived. What happened in those ten minutes, Mr. De Silva? Don't start accusing me again. It's a question, Mr. De Silva. I found that dosser in my car and I dragged him out. That's all. And you can't prove I did anything else. That's right. We can't. Sorry, I don't want to be but rude, but do you, do you speak English? Uh, no. I'm sorry. There is one fact Sergeant Cryer forgot to tell you. We arrested a boy last night who's admitted breaking into your car. So, there wouldn't have been a case against the old man after all. When I came to this country, I knew the streets weren't paved with gold. I knew it was going to be hard. But if you told me how hard, Sorry, Sarge. Is there more to go? Yeah. Uh, do you want the good or the bad? The good news is De Silva doesn't want to take the matter any further. He seemed very sorry over I had died. I'm sure. Now, what you said to him wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Well, it seems to me, sir, there's a difference between being accountable to the public and letting them walk all over us. I couldn't agree with you more. We've just got to play the game sometimes, that's all, whether we like it or not. Now, you know that, Bob, better than anyone. What's the bad news? You really want to know? We've had a call from a Mrs. Travers. Um, she's still at the hospital. She wants to make a complaint about the way you treated her uncle last night. You're joking. I wish I was. <laughs>